Do you ever wonder what happens when the police leave? Crime scene cleaners are private companies that handle the cleanup after the police are gone. Spalding Decon is one of the nation's largest cleanup companies handling the aftermath of homicides, suicides, decompositions, hoarding, and much more. These are our stories. So we're on our way to a mold and rodent dropping job. So that's rat feces? Hey guys, so we're on our way to a mold and rodent dropping job. Woman's house kind of flooded, got affected two bathrooms and the ceiling of a utility room. Well, there's also rodent droppings in the walls too, so we're doing both. But so today you get to you get to be in there for a uh, a full demo of two bathrooms and a ceiling of a utility room. So we're tearing it all out. So it should be a lot of action shots, a lot of good stuff. Stay tuned. Steve, can you tell us a little bit about what we're doing and why? Yeah, so right now we're putting up a containment wall because we're gonna be working on the mold, mold remediation inside this bathroom, okay? So as we're doing our work, we're gonna be agitating the mold spores and as we agitate the, the mold spores, we don't want them to get out into the, the rest of the house. So we put up a containment wall, work inside the containment. As you come out of the containment, you will don and dock your PPE to make sure that you're not spreading mold force throughout the house. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm doing this half because uh, we have a little bit of excess because we always try to make sure that we go a little bit wider on on both sides because you can always cut, cut less, it's hard to add more, so. So one of the, the hardest parts for every technician, including myself, I actually got my butt kicked on doing my own containment earlier in the week, is putting up these containments. Because, depending on the, the door jam and the height of it, if you're trying to do it by yourself, really, as you see, there's not a lot of space for both of us to work in here. So this is really a one-man job. So what you wanna do is you wanna start from the top, hang your sheet, make sure it's nice and straight on the top as you're hanging your sheet, and then make your cut so that it fits the door as best as possible, so that you have a nice tight containment. You do not want a loose containment because if the air is on or a fan is blowing like our dehumidifier is in there and it has an exhaust fan and stuff like that, that puts a lot of play in that containment area and will eventually pull that tape off the wall if not taped properly or there is too much slack in the containment wall. Let's see how this looks after he's done. Yes. Oh, that'll work. Yeah. Um, right. Cut the rest of this in here. see that as people come in and out sometimes that this loosens up and I always check just make sure we're nice and tight on the side now we got to check the zipper okay see here see where my gap the zipper goes down here in the gap because I want to be able to close it beyond where that gap is to actually provide containment zip up and you'll see I did the same thing up here Plastic is up here, I can go a little bit higher. 
and then I have access into my containment area. Basically, uh, we're in one of three access points to the attic and uh, we're removing the insulation. So the original insulation was a layer of batting, so it, it had like paper on one side. Um, when we started pulling it, I noticed a lot of tunnels. Um, so there is, you know, some rodent damage that's been up here. So there's tons of tunnels that we saw. They actually communicate through tunnels. Lots of feces. So far we have have one fatality on record. Uh, definitely had a skeleton that was plastered to that drywall, which we sucked right up. We almost had a second fatality. Our hose literally almost sucked me aside. <laughs> so, you know, when you do a job like this, your equipment is like super important. So um, we have fortunately a machine that allows us to suck the bats with the uh, rest of the stuff up at the same time. So challenges we're facing, as you can see, there's lots of lines running um, all over. So, it, you know, we gotta be very careful. Um, obviously the, the pitch in this area is also not forgiving, but uh, we're getting it done. I I'm excited for the homeowner because like once the insulation's out, when you have rodent infestations, you notice an imme immediate improvement of like the indoor air quality. And so she's gonna, the house is gonna feel a lot fresher. All right, how are you holding up, Isaiah? Are you doing all right? Pretty good. I mean, let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. That's all we got for you right now. Yeah. We're gonna treat them. Okay, but we gotta get down into that first. So get the tile out, clear, clear your, your working space, and then start working down. As we go. Okay. Problem is, once we, this is a small bathroom, so we're also gonna have to do our vacuuming and stuff in here. Okay. Steve, so as you're tearing up the wall, what are you seeing? So I'm seeing where the rest of the mold is. So we already did a mold assessment here. It came back positive, at, called for remediation. We see here as I expose more of the wall, discoloration on some of these beams here. Some major discoloration in here. But down here, this is bloated dry wood from where it had been wet. As you see, I can visibly, I can break it apart with my hand because it's very weak at this point, okay? So what we're gonna do is get an access point so that I can start getting all of this bloated and, and nasty wood out of here and then treat the support beams and then uh, seal them so that they are no longer a risk to create more mold within the house. Okay, Steve, can you tell us why we need to remove the toilet? The leak happened on this wet wall that is the shower right here. But when I did my moisture readings, the moisture showed that this wall was wet behind this toilet. So this drywall needs to come. I'm gonna have to pop the baseboards, cut this, but I can't do that if the toilet's in the way, so I gotta remove it. This wall was wet, so we gotta pull that drywall because that drywall acts as a sponge and soaks up that moisture. We already know that there's mold. Mold will be growing inside of that drywall as well. Is it up here? protocol shows that if we have if we find more visible mold as we're doing this we got to keep on going our two feet and treat you see all this right here is we take care of As 
you see this right here all needs to be treated for mold right here okay this is different than what we see here okay this is for like a for tile to be set there it's it's supposed it's built to be water resistant because it is for the shower but this is decorative decorative for the drywall and stuff and it's a little less water resistant than this is so once we get the HEPA back in here we'll get to see this we'll know more all right what are you gonna do now all right so now all of our mold spores and drywall dust and just general stuff that came out of the wall and debris. We're gonna suck up at a HEPA vac, which has a HEPA filter, which filtrate, uh, it's a, it's a self-sustaining vacuum. So it just keeps everything inside, whereas like your normal shop vac, just blows kind of all those particles and stuff out the back. So it's self-sealing and closed. So we're gonna use that to suck everything up to make it better. Room here, okay, or the utility room. This is where they were doing their laundry and stuff. This is where the roof started sagging and actually caved in. If you look right here, this browning on the, on the ceiling right here, this was the indication signs for them that it was leaking water through. And then come over here and look at this support beam. This support beam right here has visible mold. Okay, when it's black, it's bad. When it's black and white and pussy, it's even worse. But the rule is two foot, so now we gotta go two foot beyond that. So, so I gotta go at least to here. So, let me make my marks. We are in access two of three, and we did half of it so far. Immediately when I went in, it was just like, the temperature was way off. And a lot of times um, you have heat build up. There's not a lot of um, exhaust initially, so that can also contribute to mold. I know you guys with Spalding Decon are working on that. But as I was removing the insulation, the other thing that I noticed is that um, when they did the construction of the home, they actually, there's, couple kinds of insulation. Um, so here we have blown fiberglass, but underneath it is rolled bats uh, that's faced, so it's got a paper. So when they installed the bats, they actually covered the soffits. So the bats were basically covering that. So the fresh air goes in from the outside, but unfortunately it wasn't allowing the fresh cool air to go in. And that's another reason why the heat was building up. So we pulled that out um, immediately. We started noticing a difference. Um, we got the hottest side of the house done. Uh, we typically try to work on the south-southwest exposure because that's the hottest part. So basically we've got the hottest part of the second story attic done. So I'm sure we'll find more things. So far there's no dead bodies in that spot, but uh, we'll keep looking baby. That's it for now. So the next thing I'm going to do, take all these out, and if interesting enough, there's screw, there's nail, there's nail, there's screw. Sometimes these laborers, they'll just use whatever they have available. Alright, so this piece looks pretty gnarly on the back side, looking at it, and so it means I gotta go this way, but I'm also seeing that this is a live electrical wire, so I gotta pull this down, tuck it away. Let's tuck it back this way. It's going to be pretty interesting. We're going to go, go, go. So 
so that's rat feces. As you know, Jessica's here doing the installation. All right, guys. As you see, we are driving back to the office into day one today. Very exciting day. We started the demo in the master bathroom. We found that there was more molds. So we had to go an additional two feet. Uh, we are gonna have to pull up the, the hardwood flooring tomorrow. So that's gonna be an interesting task. Um, we also pulled the majority of the, the roof that needs to be pulled from the utility room. Uh, we treated all the, all the support beams. We still have a little bit more to do to pull, but because we were wrapping up, we treated those. It's gonna be a, a multiple step process to treat that so that we make sure that the mold is completely killed within inside that, that area that is between the, the first floor and the second floor um, that where the leak happened and, and created mold. Very interesting day, May, made for a little change on, on our pace and our direction, but we were able to get a good portion of it done today. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified of the next episode. For more information, visit any of our locations.